Welcome to another DIY video. Before calling the professional, maybe it's DIYable. This time, we are talking about how to change the winter tires like a pro. There are so many Tesla videos out there, but many of them don't give you the complete picture, or they don't have enough technical details of changing tires. So, I am making this video to help you. I have been changing my own tires and also on my family members' cars for more than 20 years. I know what I'm talking about. This is the new set of winter tires I got. The first question is, what size of rubber do you need? For Tesla Model 3 Long Range, you can use the same configuration as the summer tires, 235, 45, 18 inches. But if you ask anyone living in the area having heavy snow, they will tell you to go with narrower tires. For me, I got the Continental Viking Contact 7, 215, 50, 18 inches. Of course, Tesla fanboys will argue about this. I am not gonna go there. Next, you need to shop for your rims. I guess it would be odd for a Tesla on Steely. When you are looking for aftermarket rims for your winter tires, there are a couple of points I want to share with you. It has to be winter approved. You want to look for rims that is hub-centric and able to use the original nuts. These are the numbers you need, 18 inches by 8.5 inches in size, bolt pattern is 5 by 114.3 millimeters, center bore is 64.1 millimeters. Hub-centric rims will fit your car perfectly without the need of adapter ring. This company Rapica is one of the few manufacturers that let you use the vehicle's original nuts. You may ask, why is it important? If you have bought aftermarket rims before, you may have noticed that some of the manufacturers actually let you use the vehicle's original nuts. However, you cannot use the regular socket. You have to buy thin wall socket. That's a big problem. If you bring your car to the mechanics, many of them will just use regular impact socket and it will scratch your rims. Even the dealership, they don't give a in another case, you just cannot use the original nuts because of the offset or the original nuts is too short. Not all the vehicles in the world use 60 degrees acorn nuts. Toyota and Lexus, for example, they have washers. You have to use the lug nuts provided by the rims manufacturer. This is an example. I had the Nissan Leaf before the Tesla. Look at this, it comes with a special key for the nuts. This is driving me crazy. Again, mechanics doing work for you may use impact wrench on this and it will damage the key and the nuts. You may not agree with me if you care about cosmetic and look more than the potential risk of failure. I have to agree, the aftermarket nuts looks prettier. This brand, Replica, solved all this problem. You can use the original lug nuts as well as the regular impact socket. I am not affiliated with this company. I just want to share my experience and help you from the bottom of my heart. For Tesla Model 3, it comes with this ugly plastic wheel cover called AeroCap. Unless you're on a road trip and want to save some mileage, you don't really need this for daily driving because it makes you look like an idiot. The alloy rim underneath is looking pretty good. If you have done your research, you know you have to buy a set of jack pad. You can make one using a hockey puck, but I didn't do it because I don't play hockey. In the old days for gasoline engines, you can lift the car up using the center support. That's how I did it in the past. It makes the job a lot faster. For Tesla, you don't have a center support. There are only four lifting points. Now, you need a floor jack. Because Tesla has very low clearance, your floor jack may not be able to go under the jack pad. If your life sucks and it happens to you, a quick workaround is to drive your Tesla on a 2x6. Then, you will have tons of clearance. I ran into that problem. I was so pissed. So, I bought this low-profile 3-ton jack when it was on sale at Princess Auto, and it worked flawlessly. With one tire hanging in the air, we can proceed to the next step. I have a 4.9 SCFM 5-gallon air compressor in the basement, and this impact wrench IR231G can produce 500 foot-pounds. For any serious DIY people and you already have a good air compressor, you should get an impact wrench. 
The reason is that this tool is so tough and it will continue to work even after you pass away. You can give this to your grandkids. It's a good investment. Of course, there are a couple of other options. You can use a $10 Spreaker bar or you can get a 120 volt or cutlass impact wrench. One very important number you need to look at is the nut busting power. Do not buy any of these tools with less than 400 foot pounds. Sometimes you have very stubborn nuts after the winter. You can get very frustrated if it doesn't have enough power. Trust me, I have been through all that. This sounds so professional. This may capture the attention of the hot single mom across the street. Be warned. That is beautiful. It looks as cool as Grimes. Most of the Tesla videos out there is missing this important step. You need to apply the copper base anti seize compound to the center hub. Trust me, I had a very bad experience with one of the rims got stuck in the past and it took me one full hour to get it off. It's not fun. Anti seize compound solved all these problems. Don't apply to the wheel studs, it's dangerous. Your wheels will come off. But if you like, you can apply to the surface too. Now you should have two tires on the left having the same rotational direction to the front and the same goes to the right hand side. If you have a tire facing the wrong direction, sorry dude, your life sucks. You have to go back to the tire shop and start yelling at the guy. If you can afford a Tesla, I am pretty sure you can afford a set of wheel lock. Place your foot on the bottom of the rim so it won't move, then install the wheel lock by hand, hand tighten it. Just leave it like that, we will come back to this. Next, install the original Tesla lock nuts. Just put them on, you don't have to tighten them. Now set your impact wrench to maximum power. To avoid over tightening, you can use torque limiting extension bar. Tesla has the specification of 129 foot pounds, so I am using a 120 foot pounds extension bar. 21 millimeters socket is the way to go. Lower the car back to the ground. We still have the wheel lock to do. At this point, you need a torque wrench. Set it precisely at 129 foot pounds. We will do this in reverse order using the star pattern. Let's make sure the rest of the nuts get exactly 129 foot pounds. Pump the tire to 42 psi. Repeat the same for the rest of the car. Sometimes you want to use a jack stand for safety reason if you have a bad feeling about your Tesla gonna kill ya. Alright, the installation is completed. Looking very good. What do you think? I never had TPMS sensors on any winter tires I had in the past. All the cars including Tesla. You will just get a message on the screen and also this little icon above. That's no big deal at all. Even with the best winter tires you have, there is one big problem with Tesla. You feel like you are losing control and traction whenever you release the accelerator in the slippery or icy road. There is something to do with the regent brake settings. In winter time, I changed the stopping mode to creep mode. This will change the stopping behavior and it will act like a normal car. This solves the loose traction problem. Finally, I strongly recommend to buy a good set of floor mat because winter is really harsh. I hope this helps. Give this a thumbs up if you think this video has some good information. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.